from the John DeVita Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. So sit back and enjoy Paranormal Radio. And now here is the king of Paranormal Radio, Mr. Robert Trisek. Thank you, John. I'm still the king, huh? I still haven't lost my kingly status yet. I haven't been demoted to prince. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, John. Uh, tonight's show, I'm very excited about this because we've got a guest at uh, short notice, too. Um, I talked with Mr. Dale Kismerick, um last night and asked him I'd like to get him uh, on the radio, and he said, sure, he'd be happy to do it. And I says, well, you can come on tomorrow if you'd like. If that's too much short notice for you, we'll get you on in the, for the December show. He said, nope, let me check my schedule. Yep, I'll do it tomorrow. So we have him with us. Uh, and just in case you don't know who Mr. Kismerick is, we'll introduce him. Uh, he is the pre You're still are the president, aren't you, of the Ghost Paranormal Research Society of Illinois. He's the president of that. I don't know if he lives. In, you live in the ghostly White House since you're the president, or no, not yet. No, you don't live in the White House. No. And do you, did they call you? What do they call your wife? Did they call her the first lady of paranormal, or just the secretary? Just she's the secretary since you're the president. Well, most presidents have secretaries, so I guess that's that's the way that would work. And uh, Mr. Kazmierik does that, and we're just very happy to have him on. Uh, some time ago, gosh, about three years ago or so, I was doing a show at WARG Radio, and we had him on as a guest there, and I actually found the tape of that uh, broadcast. Um, I was looking today in storage. I have some stuff because I just moved about a month ago, and I put a lot of things into storage in it, and I was in the storage bin uh, looking for some other items, and in the box, and there sitting on top was the tape. So I said, okay, fine, as long as this is here, it's telling me something. So I brought the tape in. So we're just going to play a teeny bit of that. We won't play the whole thing because that'll be the whole show right there. And we're going to talk with Mr. Kazmierik because he's got a lot of fascinating things to do. Um, he authors books. He's written, gosh, how many books have you written? Now, you've written a few more since last time. Six so far. Six so far you've done? I know I've got the one. I've got the spirit photography one because that's why I like. I like the photography end of paranormal and um, he does that, he does tours, he does investigations, just all sorts of, just every field of paranormal. Uh, Mr. Kazmierik, welcome to Paranormal Radio. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you very much. Yeah, before we start talking with you and get the conversation going here, which we will carry on for the next hour and a half or two days, however long it goes, um, Mary Browski I have with me from the Summit Park District. And Mary's got a few announcements she wants to do for the Park District there. She's going to let you know what's going on over there with us in Summit. Because we do, so from time to time, I partner up with them and do some tours with them. So we brought Mary on. Uh, Mary, go ahead. If you want to do your announcements with the Park, let us know what's going on with them over there. And then we'll start the uh, conversation with Mr. Kismerick. Oh, thank you very much, Bob. Um, well, the Summit Park District is very excited um, to host his annual uh, Breakfast with Santa. Uh, this is a family um, outing and also a very special event for families to get together and visit with Santa while having breakfast. There'll be an opportunity to have pictures taken with Santa all free. Um, this is a free event. On our breakfast menu will be pancakes, sausage, um, bacon, um, eggs, uh, orange juice, coffee, milk, cereal. So everything is free. Um, just show up. The hours are from 8 o'clock in the morning until 12 noon, and this takes place on a Saturday, December 12th. We have another special, very special um, breakfast for the seniors, and that's going to take place on Saturday as well on December 19th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, this is a very special event first time offering to seniors and it is a free event santa will be there in case you want to speak to him about anything special you want santa to bring you for christmas and um, also a photo opportunity will be offered as well now on uh, the breakfast with santa for the family um, is sponsored by marquette bank and both of these events, um, you'll see the presence of the Girl Scout Troop 50018. Um, also, there will be a given tree if you wish to bring um, a warm scarf, gloves, earmuffs, and coats. It will be greatly um, appreciated um, on both of these events. Um, Saturday, December 12th from 8 to 12 uh, for the family, Breakfast with Santa, and the second event for seniors. Um, Saturday, December 19, uh, from 9 to 12. And the address and uh, location for these two events is at the Summit Park District, 5700 South Archer Road in Summit. 
And for further information, please call 708-496-1012. And anyone that answers the phone, we'd be glad to give you further information and directions how to get to our Park District uh, location uh, for these two very special events. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, John, do you do Santa over there? Are you are you Santa Claus at the Summer Park District? No, you're not Santa. You don't do Santa, huh? No. <laughs> now these are not haunted Santa events. These are just regular Santa events, right? So this has absolutely nothing to do with paranormal. No, nothing at all. <laughs> you forgot. You forgot the long distance one, the one we were talking about this morning. We're going to be doing something, and this is where Windy City Radio comes in. And this is kind of long distance, but we're, I'm going to announce it tonight anyway. Though mm -hmm. we're going to be doing something different, and again, nothing to do with paranormal. We're doing game show night. We're going to be doing TV's classic game shows like You Bet Your Life and Let's Make a Deal and Beat the Clock. And it's going to be a family night that we're going to be doing at Summit Park. And we're going to be doing that in March. So this is, like I said, this is down the line. But you know how these things are. You have to plan these things five, six months in advance to do them because there's a little bit of work with them and to get them together and get them going. And uh, at this event, and this is going to be a free event too, sponsored by the Park District. We're going to have some refreshments served and come on down and play some of these classic games and stuff and win some prizes and have a little fun with that. And um, John DeVita with uh, Windy City um, Broadcasting here, they're going to do a live. We're going to do a live broadcast there from that. We're going to broadcast the whole event, so we're kind of excited about that for Windy City and for the Park District and everything. So we're looking forward to that. Okay, let's see here. Geez, what else do we have going on? I think that's enough announcements for me. Mr. Kazmarek, Dale Kazmarek, welcome to Paranormal Radio, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice to have you here. Again, it's been a while. Like I said, it's been a while since I talked with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mr. Kazmarek, good Lord. Let's see what else you do here. He authors books. He does tours. The tours are still the same thing. I got an old sheet from a few years ago with you. Excursions into the unknown. Right? Absolutely. The tours that we've been doing <clears throat> in Chicago since 1982... Uh, if you remember the uh, late Richard Crow, oh yes, he uh -huh. uh, was a great friend of mine. He he was. Uh, uh, you guys are actually neighbors. You live not too far from each other. Exactly, in we both yeah. live in mm -hmm. Oakland. Uh, uh, Richard Crow was actually the the founder, really, of Chicago Ghost Tours in Chicago. He was really the uh, I like to call it the grandfather of ghost tours in Chicago. Uh, my tours basically started about almost a full ten years after Richard Crow was already already going in Chicago. But uh, right now, my tours are the longest-running tours in Chicago. They've been going on since 1982. Uh, the tours usually last around four hours apiece. And um, they're not just around Halloween. That's what a lot of people, uh, under mis mistaken identity, you know, these tours year literally are around the clock, or around the, you know, the whole year. Uh, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, if you go to the website, you can actually uh, book a tour. And if people are coming from out of state or out of town, or if they have a convention, uh, if they don't, want, they don't want to do a weekend tour, basically, since I'm retired, I can do a tour pretty much any day of the week, uh, put together tours, and uh, actually... Uh, fabricate a tour for people that want to see a specific site or a specific, uh, specific locale. Oh, okay, so yeah, if they got, like they say, we want to do Bachelors Grove, we want to do this, we want to do that, you, you can do like a custom tour for them. Absolutely. And how do they get a hold of you if they want to do one of these tours? Is it still the, um, well, I don't want to give your phone number out here. Sure. Give the phone number out? Absolutely. Okay, 708-425-5163. Did I do it right? Absolutely. Yeah, 708-425-5163 no, if you're interested in doing one of Mr. Kazmierich's tours. I went on one some years ago. Gosh, it's got to be about 10 years ago. And I went on your tour, and it was very informative. You really know your stuff. You do a lot of talking. Um, I actually fell asleep on the tour, not because I was <laughs> bored, but because it was very warm. It was like a warm, it was like a, it was like a very stormy kind of night. It was perfect for the tour. And the little van that we were on was really warm and kind of overheated, and we were in there, and I just kind of dozed off and everything like that, and I missed some of it. I said, oh, darn it, anyway. But then I woke up, and I caught the rest of it. So, yeah, it's very good, though. You will not fall asleep on the tour like I did. I can fall asleep, and I probably fall asleep doing this broadcast. So that's how I, that's how I operate. Mr. Kazmarek also has authored books, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, gosh, six of them, and another one in the works, did you say? Well, there's actually kind of two in the works that I'm, I'm working on right now. I'm, I'm working on a possible Windy City Ghost 3. Three. Uh, which is the third volume of Windy City Ghosts. And I'm trying to put together, uh, right now it's kind of an untitled book right now. I'm not sure what it's going to be titled, but it's going to be uh, 
In 2015, I've started my 40th year of ghost research. I started way back in 1975, so it's going to be kind of encapsulating, you know, what's happened in 40 years and how the technology has changed. I was just going to ask you about that. How have things changed, you know, over the I mean, before you went around with a notebook, a pad and paper, and a little camera, and that was about it, a tape recorder, maybe that was about it. Yeah, when I first started back in the the late 1970s, I mean, the, the entire arsenal of ghost hunting equipment, for me was a uh, cassette tape recorder, a 35 millimeter camera. And if you had an EMF device, it was a compass. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, there wasn't much. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah it was kind of simple. And yet we did it, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. John, play just a little bit. I've got that. Uh, this is an interview that I did with Mr. Kuzmarek, oh gosh, about three years ago from another um, radio station when I was at WARG. And we'll just play just a teeny bit of that, just to jog your memory here, see if you remember this. One of the people I think I would never get in, in a chance and, you know, one in a million, uh, they say, sure, I'll do the show. And that was the case with our guest here, Mr. Dale Kaczmarek. Um I spoke with him the week in between the Christmas holiday and New Year's holiday and uh, left a message there with someone. And I really, quite honestly, never expected to get a call back. And on New Year's Eve, my phone rang and it was Mr. Kaczmarek. And he said, sure, I'll do the show. <laughs> Great. So he's with us this evening. Uh, if you don't know, and I don't know how you could be interested in paranormal and psychic phenomena and not know Mr. Kaczmarek, Jeez, I gave you a pretty good introduction. What does he have? He's got a list of credentials here about the size of the Old Testament and the Bible. Uh, He's written many books, amongst them Windy City Ghosts, Windy City Ghosts 2, Field Guide to Spirit Photography. That's the one I have because I'm into the photography end of the paranormal a lot. Spirit Guide to Spirit, uh, Spirit Photography. He does the Field Guide to Ghost Hunting Techniques. He also teaches classes. If you want to become a ghost hunter, he will tell you how to go about doing that. He runs tours of his own. They're called Excursions into the Unknown. And he is also the president of the Ghost Research Society of Illinois. I don't know what else he does, too. I think he paints bathtubs in his spare time, too. He just has a list of credentials in the paranormal as far as your arm and leg will take you. Mr. Kaczmarek, welcome to our show. It's a very, uh, it's an honor to have you on here. I'm very pleased to get you on here. And you're a very nice gentleman to talk to. We spoke a little bit uh, when I met you at Subway. And actually, I met you about seven years ago because I went on one of your tours. You don't remember me, but I remember you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Um, Go ahead. Introduce yourself to us. Tell us a little bit about you, what you're doing, any current things you're working on, and then we'll just get into it. (laughs) Well, I've been involved in uh, ghost (laughs) research since about 1975. Uh, I started out uh, as a lot of other people in the field, maybe they've had a paranormal experience or a personal encounter. I did not have that myself. I got involved uh, in the field mostly from my parents telling me ghost stories as as a youngster. Uh, I was born and raised a Roman Catholic, 100% Polish, so I have a very heavily ethnic background. Oh, Yashimash. Yeah, yeah, Yashimash. And... uh, my parents, as they were growing up, my mom and dad, in, in the 1930s and 1940s, as they were dating in the Chicagoland area, uh, my dad's favorite thing to do with my mom after the yeah, date cut it off. We'll was start to talking ride again. around a very famous... Uh, okay, that was, the, that was the old interview that we did about three years ago. We'll just pick it up from there. It's, it sounds like we just did this yesterday, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I, we, could, we could not even hear you on here and just played the, uh, played the tape, and that would have been it. But it's, it's nice to see you and nice to hear new things. Mm-hmm. So that was about three years ago, and um, gosh, some of the stories you were doing there was fast. I got to go home and listen to the tape because I was fascinated by some of that stuff. It's been a while since I heard that tape. Uh, that tape, it was kind of funny. Like I said, I was doing some, you know, cleaning out a storage thing, and it just out in the box, and there it was. And I says, boy, how coincidental. Having him on tonight, and then I find his tape sitting at the top of the box there. So, yeah, um, neat. So, okay, what were we talking about in that one? 40, 40 years, you said, you've been in ghost hunting business. Yeah, 40 years, uh, more than 4,000 cases I've investigated. Um, 4,000 cases. Yeah. How many of them turned out to actually be something legitimate out of the 4,000? Probably a... Uh, about 70 percent so pretty good track record yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty good, good track record the other ones not that they were hoaxes or anything but just they turned out not to be either actually, or yeah, so either, you found some explanation yeah, for either it. a natural explanation uh the, we were able to, to debunk or re- recreate what was going on uh just give you an example we were we were uh, called into to do an uh, investigation in a house in rolling hills which is you know from oakland to rolling hills is a pretty good jaunt sure and uh, what I usually try to do is talk to people on the phone and get all relevant information about what's going on. Try to do an on-air interview, if you will, kind of all over the phone. To kind of save myself the possibility of going out there and finding out that something perfectly natural. And this woman was an elderly woman. She was up in her 90s, and she was living by herself. And she said that she was hearing a chirping sound going on in her house all the time. She couldn't figure out what was causing it. And she was very scared. Uh, she lived by herself and said, well, it didn't sound like, a, like anything I could 
determine what it was. So I said, okay, I'll come up there with my team. We'll, you know, do an investigation. And we, we always do an investigation. We don't charge anybody, by the way. Uh, our, all our investigations are free. We, you know, we, we do accept donations if people want to donate, but it absolutely it's free. Uh, so we go up there, and uh, it was about three minutes in the, into the investigation, we started hearing the chirping sound. Hmm. I go, I know what it is. It was a smoke detector going off. Oh, okay. That would be an obvious one. That would be easy. But if you're an elderly woman... She's and probably thinking it was the ghost of her dead canary or something you know, chirping away there. And uh, she normally had her, her nephew come over and change the battery, and she wasn't sure what this was. <laughs> so within five minutes, I you know put a new battery in and exercised. So you, drove all this, you drove all this way to change a battery in a smoke detector. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes it's just as simple as that. So, uh, you know, other times they're a little bit more complex. I'm with you on that one. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been scared yourself? I always like to ask this to people that do ghost hunting things. Now, now, myself, I don't actually get scared like where you get, you might get startled from the unexpected, you know, you see something, but scared, not actually. You ever been frightened by anything that really just terrorized you? No. Says, Whoa, no. 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 <clears throat> I can honestly say that, too. Yeah, I never have. Yeah. Things have happened to, to myself and to my team that has been unexpected, mm-hmm. like you say as well. Um, to give you a good example of that, we were doing an investigation here very recently in a place called Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, which is a 256,000 square foot old abandoned insane asylum in West and West Virginia. And we have, we were in there for eight hours doing an investigation. There's That'll make you insane yourself, won't uh, it? Absolutely. Four floors. I mean, just walking around, it was just an enormous place. Uh, we were in one particular room, uh, one particular hallway, I should say, uh, which was the one of the oldest wings in the, the building. And according to what the tour guide was telling us, there was one particular patient that had lived there in the past, a, a woman named Ruth. And she was very antisocial towards males. Hmm. She would always throw things at orderlies, doctors, visitors, anybody was males, females she didn't care about. And this is a true story. So we were just a few doors down from where she was a resident, her room. Mm -hmm. And we were doing an EVP session, trying Mm, to pick up spirit voices. And we had a camera placed there and we had, you know, a REM pod in, in the center of the thing that picks up. When you say an EVP, just so, just for somebody that just is listening to this broadcast may not know what that is. Go ahead, tell us what the EVP is. It's electronic voice phenomenon. It's the idea that you try to pick up a uh, communication with spirit using a digital tape recorder or other devices. Uh, it can even be in the audio portion of a video. So you're trying, to, you're trying to capture the sound of the ghost, the sound of absolutely. the Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Just as to clear we were, that up for anybody that may not know what it is. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we were there probably no more than about um, a minute and a half. Ooh, that was fast. When we, st- I started to feel my hair on my arms and my neck standing straight up and we actually videotaped it and I got extremely cold. Now the three other people that were with me were all females. They did not experience anything. Hmm. Now it got to the point where this ghost got a little bit amorous perhaps. It actually grabbed my buttocks. Wow. And I actually got this on videotape. I mean, I I can actually, you'll actually see me, you can go to my website, you can actually see this actual video. You actually see me grab my left buttocks and I go, Oh, what was that? And, and, and now, that's very rare chill. for they actually have any kind of physical contact. Yeah, which physical is so, contact. Yeah, yeah. And again, the other three, because they were females nothing. at the time, nothing. And it went on for about a minute and a half. So we concluded the session by doing a fast EVP session. Now, we used a device called an obelisk. Now, if you're familiar with an obelisk, it, it, it has the ability to, for spirits to form their own words. If you use it in a phonetic mode, they actually can put together vowels and consonants to form words and then put those... Words so you can actually understand. It's not just like what we normally hear. Everything is kind of garbled and, yeah. and mumbo jumbo. I asked a question at the end of the session. Uh, do you want us to leave or do you want me to leave? One word came out. You. Yeah. Did you go? We, we stopped after that. Well, I would not, too. Not yeah. because we were scared, but, but we, we thought we were intruding exactly, upon our space. Right, yeah. You don't want to, yeah, yeah. 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 You don't want to disturb them. Yeah. And yeah. again, people can go to the website and, and look under GRS investigations and actually can, can see that. Now, at the that beginning evidence. of the story, you mentioned a tour guide. So they actually give tours through this place? 
Yeah, you can actually do t uh, regular just ghost tours. Mm -hmm. you, you can walk through, which are probably less expensive than actually doing a ghost investigation. Sure, there's more involved with the more investigation. Involved, yeah, right. yeah, and much more time. Exactly. Uh, these investigations, just in case you don't know, it's not like the shows. I get this all the time, and I'm sure you get this a lot too with these shows they have on TV. You know, people watch these things, and in an hour it's all solved. This is not the way this works. These investigations are hours and hours. So it's, you were there for a long time. Like you said, you were there for like a minute and a half, and your hair started standing up. That's really a fast response to this, because normally it's it's a, it's a while before you get any kind of responses sure. mary anytime you want to jump in on this anytime you want you got something to say you just feel free to jump in and, and join in here did you do this during the day or at night well most of these investigations unfortunately are are evening investigations and i don't know why that's the case i mean that if you look on these these what i call reality tv shows yeah. and i won't name them but i, I know you'll yeah, know which yeah, ones yeah. You, which which ones that are on tv they're on the sci-fi channel and different channels these all these investigations always seem to be in, in dark buildings at night using night shot cameras, night vision cameras. Um, you know, you don't always have to go out and do investigation in total darkness. We've gotten some re real relevant you know, investigations and evidence in, in broad daylight. You know, We've been out to Bachelors Grove a number of times. In a, if, i got to talk to you about that. I'm glad you brought that up. We actually yeah. got a very interesting photograph that actually oh, showed Oh, that's up the one I want to talk about. In, yeah. in mm -hmm. broad daylight. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't have to be there in the middle of the night to get, you know, relevant information or, you know, a paranormal encounter. Uh, it's just that people want to investigate in the dark because it's spooky. Yeah. I think it's what it um, is. Some of the investigators, some of the teams, investigative teams that I've had on and stuff that I've talked to, um, they say they like doing it at night because not so much for the spookiness of it. It has to be midnight and it's got to be a thunderstormy night, that type of thing. But just because at night it's more quiet. They say you don't have traffic noises, you don't have people noises, you don't have that. It's more quiet, so they like doing it at night. So sorry, it makes sense that sure. way. But myself personally, some, a few of the times I've had encounters with ghosts, I had them during the day. Once actually at Bachelor's Grove myself too, yeah. yeah. Your Bachelor's Grove photo, we got to talk about that one because I use that one a lot. Uh, sometimes I do these presentations and lectures at the libraries and things like that, and I put that photo, the famous one of the lady sitting on the, t on the tombstone. And I always give credit to you. I want to make that. I want to point that out. <laughs> That's okay. I always, Absolutely. I always announce that. I said this was taken by Daryl Kazmierich by his research team. And actually, about four years ago, I did a tour with the Central Stickney Park District, a little bus tour, and we went to Bachelors Grove with it. And one lady that was on the bus said she was with your team, and she said she was the one that took the photo. Now, I don't know if she was telling me the truth or not. Her name I, escapes me. I really don't know her name. Okay. But she said she did. And I kind of believed her. I mean, what she said kind of clicked, you know. And she seemed very sincere about it. But she said she was with your team, and she was the one that took the photo. So, do you know who took that? photo actually? absolutely her name was jude huff sounds good to me that could mm -hmm. very well have been her yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she her last name is now is now fells so mm -hmm. it's jude huff fells f-e-l-z um but she was there with her sister and her mother mm -hmm. which were all part of my team during and this time. was in broad daylight broad daylight in, in the afternoon in in august of 1991 uh we had given everybody a map of the location and told them to go through in teams of two uh to you know throughout the entire cemetery to mark on the map where the, any equipment they brought along indicated something wrong. If they felt something, if they heard something, they, they smelled anything, if they got a, a paranormal feeling anywhere, just to mark it on the map. Um, and then not to co corroborate with one another. I, I don't want, didn't want any cross-contamination. Oh, I heard this here, so somebody else mm -hmm. would say, I heard this here as well. When we got done with that, everybody sweeping through, uh, they were all on transparencies on grease pencils. So we just took the transparency, laid them on the one map, and there was like three, two or three locations that a number of people seemed to have had and experienced that. One being a checkerboard tombstone that had no name on it. And we looked for a name on it. It had no name. It was probably a pedestal or some other thing that was on top that, had lo that was long gone. One of our peep team members, Jude Huff, uh, had a 35 millimeter camera, this is way before digital photography came out, with black and white high speed infrared film. And she took a picture of that, of that image or that, that, that tombstone. Nobody was sitting on the tombstone. Nobody was even near the tombstone at the time. And uh, when she got the film back about a week later, because you know digital, you can get that instant picture, but 35 millimeter, you have to develop. So you don't know if you got something until you develop the film. She said she at first didn't notice the image until she looked at it the second time. And then when she blew it up, there's clearly a person standing, uh, sitting on the tombstone in profile in what looks like a Victorian gown, down to her ankles, shoulder-length hair, brown hair, 
part of her head and part of her knees are actually semi-transparent. You can actually see the right through. Yeah, facial features on that photo you can't really make out too well. You right. really can't, yeah. Mm-hmm. And obviously there was nobody dressed in a Victorian garb in our group. You know, this was in a summer afternoon. We were all in short, short sleeve shirts, you know, maybe blue jeans. Um, so it's one of the most amazing photographs it's, I've it's ever It's probably captured. one of the more more famous photos, too. Uh, just, just in case, like I say, if you don't know what this is, uh, gosh, go up on your computer and look up ghost photography or look up Bachelors Grove Cemetery. You will find it, and it's a very easy one to spot. It's, like you said, a checkerboard stone, just a plain square checkerboard s- stone, tombstone, and you see this image of a lady in, the, in a white gown, you know, sitting, a, a sepia kind of photo, sitting on this. Like I said, I use that photo all the time in my presentation and stuff, but like I said, I always make sure I give you credit for it. I never, you know, I never take credit for it. I say this was taken by Dale Kaczmarek and his research team. They took this out there. What year did you guys take that? It was in the 80s, wasn't it? Um, 1979. Oh, before that then. It was so it was early, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, excuse me, 1981. I'm sorry. 80, 19, that's what I thought. I thought 81. it was 80s, yeah. Uh, early 1980s, uh, yeah. in August of uh, 91, I'm sorry. You got me all confused. Oh, 91. 90, 90, 91. Oh, so Actually, later 91. then. I thought it was in the 80s. No, okay. 1991. 91, August okay. 91. Mm-hmm. Um, the interesting thing about that photograph, though, unfortunately, is that I took so much flack mm-hmm. from so many people oh i'm sure uh, yeah. that uh, it's got to be a ruse it's got to be uh, somebody sitting there uh, somebody even said oh, it's your wife sitting there <laughs> but you know they have all kind of yeah. things they can do to check it out and sure. see if it's legitimate or not so i'm sure everybody's done that and you know? you, uh, for the very first time um just earlier in october um uh, we had a conference uh, ursa bielski oh, had yes, a conference mm-hmm. in chicago and for the very first time, that negative was actually brought to the conference for people to actually examine physically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it, you can actually see that has not been altered. You can actually, the good thing about having uh, a picture taken where you can actually look at a piece of film rather than a digital file, which, you know, can be photoshopped, uh, can be uh, Oh, you know, today you can images. do so many different, which, yeah, yeah, so, so much things. photography you can do. But when yeah. you have a... a piece of film in your hand a physical piece of Mm -hmm. something that you can actually hold up to the light and say this cannot be altered i mean this is something that was right out of the camera and this is nothing new you know back in the 19th century when they were doing spirit photography they you know double exposures all the time you know for ghostly images behind people and people would go like your departed loved ones you wanted to get photos of them so they'd have the person sit there to take these photos and of course it would be a double exposed image to be like this ghostly image behind them but they were all faked Absolutely, uh, and they were easy to you know to spot. This is a little this is a little different. And they, ma- and they made a lot of money doing that. Oh, too. they sure did. Yeah, you better believe it. Yeah, we're going to take a break from conversation for just a moment. Um, I always like to do. There's two things I always like to do on this show every year. One of them is for October. I always like to pay the ballad of Resurrection Mary, and for December I always like to tell the story of the Christmas tree ship. So we are going to. Since I didn't do it last month, we're going to play the ballad of Resurrection Mary now, and then it'll give us a little break from conversation, and then we'll get back more with with this interesting conversation with our guest for tonight, Mr. Dale Kismarek. I met her at a dance I remember she was very cold So strangely beautiful I swept her up to carry her home Resurrection
Okay, we are back on. Um, while you guys were listening to the Ballad of Resurrection Mary there, we had some interesting conversation going on here. That's that's kind of our little break, and we kind of conversed amongst ourselves here, and we were touching on some uh, some other interesting stuff here, which we're going to bring up on the show. Resurrection Mary, I don't want to talk too much about her because we all have Resurrection Mary. Everybody's Resurrection Mary to death. What's the last sighting that you know of, of Resurrection Mary? The last one that came to my personal attention probably was in 2008. Now, not saying that she hasn't been seen since that time. Um, you know, a lot of times people simply don't know who to call. Yeah. It's just a call kind, of little, kind of a little joke there. Or, or for instance, they, they may hold their, <laughs> their, 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 their sightings real close to the heart. They may not want to share it with them. Um, or maybe they, they see something and they're, they, they, they can't be. Mm-hmm. They can't be. Uh, so there may have been sightings since 2008. I'm sure there has. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there has been. But there has been a, a, a drastic decrease in sightings since about 1985, and that's when those overhead streetlights were put along Archer Avenue. So you said the same thing I did, too. I said it used to be very isolated over there. It used to be very dark. Uh, you didn't have that whole housing development built over there. You didn't have a lot of street. I can't remember, like, my brother used to work at Willowbrook Ballroom. He used to work out there. He was a busboy on weekends. He worked out there. So we used to go pick him up. My mom and I, you know, on weekends, he'd get out there on Saturday nights at, you know, like 1 o'clock in the morning. We'd go down there. My mother wasn't going to go in the car by herself, so she'd get me in the car to go with her, and we'd go down. And I always looked, you know, to see if I could see Resurrection Mary. Never saw anything even remotely close to her. But in those days, that used to be very, very dark. I mean, we're talking like 40 years ago. It used to be real dark there, so it's, it's a lot more built up now. Okay, we've got a sign here, go to break. So we're going to be going to break. John gives me these subtle uh, reminders here. So we're going to take a a short break here, and we'll be right back on. Come back with us, folks, and listen to more of these stories. This is good stuff. I like this myself. It's a real fast break. You are listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Tricek from the John Nevada Broadcast Center. On Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Tuesday, November the 10th, the year of our Lord, 2015. And this is Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich, Illinois. And now, Back to Bob Trisek and Paranormal Radio. Thank you, John. Yeah, just to give a little uh, station recognition there, too. Um, our sister station that uh, show, what, what day will this be broadcast on Jack FM? It will be on tomorrow morning at 10.30. Tomorrow morning, 10.30, Jack FM in Norwich, 89.7. They'll be broadcasting this. Um, also, too, in a day or two, Mr. John Chaconda, who does all the work here at Windy City, produces these shows for us. Um, he will post it up on YouTube in about a day or two. It comes up on there, so you can listen to it on that. And then also, too, the Windy City Network, www.windycityhometown.com. Also, go on the network and listen to some of the other shows they got on the Windy City Network. Chicago Junction, the Don of Sports, Meet the Chicago Historians, a lot of different entertainment and things they got on they're always looking for new programs and new entertainment that they put up on there so uh, a lot of stuff mr uh, john davida works pretty hard there to bring some of these things around here and that and and do some of these broadcasts and stuff so we got to give some credit to him too for the job that he does you know keeping radio alive here okay now back to the good haunted stuff that's the stuff i like we were talking a bit about that. We touched a little bit on Resurrection Mary. Um, we kind of had the same feelings on that one because it's been so built up around there and so lighted now where it used to not be. It used to be very dark. I think maybe she was a little more incognito and maybe felt a little more freer to be not seen. That's why maybe now sightings have kind of declined on that. Um, also, one thing I'd, I'd like to add, too, I mean, I'm sure prior to 1985, bec- before it, be- it was well lit up, I, I have no doubt that there were probably people who used to dress up oh, like yeah. Resurrection Mary and jump up jump up in front of cars. Maybe not the smartest thing to do. No, no. Uh, hmm. Because you might become the next ghost. But because, you know, today is so well lit up, I mean, a real person would have no place to run or hide that quickly. And I'm sure there were some hoaxers around that time of the year. It doesn't uh, obviously account for all the sightings by, by any means. But I'm sure there were some tricksters, some hoaxers that 
you know, you can you, you you go to YouTube. You can actually find a guy that's dressed up <laughs> with a beard and everything. I just probably I just, the guy with the black Nike shoes. Yeah, <laughs> there's one. Yeah, there's a guy with a white with a white dress. It's like in broad daylight, and they're all at. I think they, we were talking about the same one. They're all at Chet's Mountain Sound. Look, it's Resurrection Mary, and there's a guy walking across the street wearing a white dress with the beard, and he's got black Nike shoes on, and it's supposed to be Resurrection Mary. It looks more like Resurrection Larry to me, but yeah. <laughs> So it's a lot of fun. She's like uh, probably one of our more famous ones here. Uh, Bachelor's Grove now, you, you seem to do a lot of research out there and everything. Um, so many of these investigative uh, teams and people that I've talked to, they say, no, we don't do anything there. Bachelor's Grove is just kind of overdone. There's really nothing that goes on there. It's kind of too done now and that kind of thing. I don't believe so. I, I think you may have a period like we're talking now where something goes dormant for a number of years and then it starts showing itself again. Also, too, sometimes new things pop up. You know, you don't see some of the old standard ghosts. You know, you don't see the lady in white. You don't see the man with the plow going into the lagoon with the horse and that kind of stuff. You see other things, too. So sometimes, you know, new manifestations and new things kind of pop up there. You, you just never know what you're going to find over there. Myself, I like Bachelor's Grove. I always did like it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Bachelor's Grove, I mean, when you go back to Resurrection Mary, I mean, it's really just the story of the hitchhiking ghost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's versions and, and variations of that. I mean, she's seen running from the, from the cemetery, the, 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 the case of the Ben Bars, um, you know, other sightings along there. People, you know, uh, think that she's uh, hit, that they've actually hit something or, or ran through something, but they feel no thud or anything. Where in Bachelor's Grove, you have just the opposite. You have a multitude of different stories from, yes. you know, from, from disappearing houses to blue lights to the, to the farmer and his horse to the woman carrying the baby in her arms uh, to, you know, balls of light that have been seen up and down the trail. The to, yellow uh, suit man. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the hooked spirit, which may be most likely an urban, urban legend. legend. Yeah. Uh, 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 Phantom dogs and animals that have been seen near the, the near the gates. Uh, you know, just a multitude of different types of stories, and that that are constantly changing and constantly being seen by a number of people. The, the interesting thing about the Phantom House, which I you know like always like to bring up because that's you know one of the most famous stories about mm -hmm. Bachelors Grove is people see this 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 white wooden framed pillared house in the distance, um, and when they describe it to me or you know they you know they try to describe it and then they try to tell me where they see it it's on one side of the road it's on the other side of the road it's towards the entrance it's further back it's never in the same place twice so it's not like it was ever a real structure of a house there it's like a phantom house it moves around um now just recently you know um one of my good friends, uh, Pete Crappia from BachelorsGrove.com, posted some really great pictures about uh, some of the original homesteads that used to be out along the old Bachelors Grove Road. And there are some houses that look kind of similar to what this phantom house looks like. Now, what people often look at that and say, was that what I actually saw? Uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, maybe something from time and space that I just caught a fleeting glimpse of something because... Um, when people see a house, the first thing they ask me, well, how can a house be seen? It doesn't have a spirit. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking like... a good like point. A, it's it's not, that's a very good point, yeah. So it's, it's an inanimate object. It's, right. not a, it's not a living thing, yeah. 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 So what we're actually seeing, I think, is we're actually looking at maybe... Is that the right word, inanimate object? Jeez. A, 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 <laughs> I'm not a sure scene, that was the right term. A, maybe a scene out of, of, out of time and space that we're actually kind of maybe looking back into. And, and then it's kind of played over again like a movie or something. It's sort of stored up. Exactly. That's what I think a lot of these things are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, residual. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of like stored up, and then when the conditions are just right, or it's the right person, like you said, at this asylum, you know, you were experiencing this, the women, nothing. I've had this happen to me, too. Sometimes it's been me, where I'm experiencing something, and there's people I'm with, they're seeing nothing, they're feeling nothing, and other times it's the other way around. I'm with them, and they're like, aren't you feeling this? Don't you see this? I'm like, no, nothing. I'm getting nothing out of this, you know. It's just right person sometimes, right conditions, whatever. You're in tune with it. Like you said, this this ghost happened to be one that was men. She did not like men. So you being the only man in the group, she singled you out. So there's a variety of different reasons why this would happen. Sometimes, too, with the case of that house at Bachelors Grove, people say if you're looking for it in Bachelors Grove Cemetery, you're looking in the wrong spot. It's actually in Bachelors Grove Woods, which is like across the street and down the road away, up the road a little bit. So, you know, like you say, the house kind of moves around. Sure. Maybe it did move. Maybe that's why it's maybe that maybe that why that house is at unrest. Maybe it actually moved it across the street for whatever reason. You know, in its day when it actually was a house, maybe they moved it and it liked the spot it was in, so it keeps going. 
going back there. You just don't know. Another thing you must you got to keep into uh, keep in uh, keep in your uh, thought is that you have to have the right mindset. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To, I mean, if you go into a location and you basically say, "I'm not going to see a ghost today," or "I'm a disbeliever," or "I'm a skeptic," it's like turning off a light switch. You're probably never going to see anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you go there with an open mind, absolutely, and just say yeah. these things could exist then you're leaving yourself more, say, you know, open to the possibility that something may happen. It seems to me like when you're not expecting it, that's when you see it. Absolutely. It seems like that. And that's also, unfortunately, the time you're least prepared for it. When you can't have any tangible evidence, you don't have another witness, which may be something you experience by yourself, that kind of thing. And you can tell people about it. But, yeah, it's really nice if you have a witness there, which or if you have a photograph or a recording or something, some tangible evidence, with, you know, to prove this. Yeah. And that's why it, what we... When we start doing investigations in the past, past oh, five, six, seven years now, the first things that go on now is our cameras. Mm -hmm. I mean, our video cameras before anything, if we're not even set up our command center, if we're not even set up, you know, the cameras go on first because we've noticed that things will begin to happen almost immediately. Sometimes we walk in, and sometimes not all the time, but we sometimes in the past have seen or felt or had equipment go off but well, we didn't have cameras going on. It's almost like the ghost knows, and then hey, the cameras yeah. are not on. Yeah, and then the next eight hours, nothing. Exactly. It was right there. Yeah, that's that's just how this thing works. It's a hit and a miss. Yeah, you just don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. So any neat, well, that's kind of an unfair question. I was going to ask you, any new investigations you're working about? If you're working on it, you probably don't want to talk about it because it's something that you're, you know. Oh, absolutely. We yeah. have we have one coming up in Rockford on uh, November um, uh, 14th on a Saturday, which, okay, is, actually a this week. which yeah. is actually a public event that the public can actually really? join in on. Okay. Uh, it's going to be sponsored by Haunted Rockford Tours. If you go to their website, hauntedrockfordtours.com, uh, they can actually join our team. It's mm -hmm. actually going to be investigating both the Barnes Mansion and the Manny Mansion. It's, a okay. it's actually a public event. Uh, there's going to be two stations in each building um, mm. that the, the, the public will kind of filter through these four stations throughout the course of the evening, and we'll basically show them how we investigate. We'll actually do an EVP session or a dowsing rod session or a ghost box session or avala session, and we'll have cameras set up and other equipment. And then throughout the course of the evening, they, they may or may not have an experience. And then at the, at the end, they all assemble back, and they we all tell what we have picked up, you know, uh, the... Uh, the uh, participants can share their, you know, paranormal experiences, and it's always a great because uh, we've had experiences there. Okay, so this is November 14th, which is this weekend coming up. In Rockford. And yeah. this will be in Rockford, and how do they get a hold of you for this if they want to do it? Do they just show up there, or do they have to reserve? Well, they, they is should. There a, uh, now, is there a fee for this, or no? Yeah, there, there's, a, there's okay. a fee, basically. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a public event, so mm -hmm. they should get a hold of hauntedrockfordtours.com. Hauntedrockfordtours.com if you're yeah. interested in doing something like this. So, see, this goes on after the Halloween season, too. This Absolutely. isn't, you know, this isn't only during the month of October, you know. Ghosts are around all year long. That's what I always tell people. So, just yeah. uh, the, the day before Halloween, in fact, October 30th, we were doing a similar event out there in Oregon, Illinois, uh, at a place called Conover Square Mall. It's a huge um, uh, building and uh, kind of like an antique mall almost. And uh, we had five different stations in that location. We were also there with another paranormal team, and uh, we had some interesting things happen to us there. Uh, hmm. The uh, we turned the obelisk on in phonetic mode. That's where the ghosts form their own words. And uh, the first thing we asked is, can you say hello to the group? And it said, hello. Came out very clear. A nice ghost. Uh, so, I mean, you know, when you, when you get something like that, I mean, it's, it's unmistakable that you're, it's, it's not a residual. It's, mm -hmm. it's most likely an intelligent spirit that you're communicating with. It's something, somebody's hanging around for whatever reason. And you're doing it in a good way. You know, you're, and, they're, and they're receptive to you, you know, because yeah. you're saying, you know, do you want to talk to us? Do you want to, you know, what do you want to say? Um, you shouldn't really provoke them and try to get them angry. No, That's what I tell people. Yeah. You shouldn't really do that. Some people do it. They get kind of frustrated and they start asking them questions in the wrong way. And that's what you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. These TV shows do a lot of provoking. And I think, um, you know, if you provoke, you get pretty much what you're going to get. Yeah. I mean, you can get something that's maybe not so nice, mm -hmm. or maybe you know, they might not be so nice in their responses to you. Uh, you can get obscenities that come through sometimes. Uh, we get enough evidence without provoking, just treating them and re respecting them like you and I are talking right here. Just you catch having more, a conversation. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Exactly. So if you're nice to them, just like you would be, just like you're nice to any person that you're speaking with, any mortal person that's of this world, you know, you treat them in the same way. Yeah. I love this stuff. I love it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mr. Kazmierik, you are great. You've got to, it's, we got to get you on here, you know, sooner. It was, it was like a three years t- last time we had you on the radio here. We got it. You're welcome to come back anytime you want. You, you let us know when you want to come on. You just show up here. That's it. You don't need an invitation from me. So, yeah, you come on here. It's great to have you on. Uh, and there again, just to give you some plug and some notoriety here. Now, your books, which are very good, I have to admit, he writes some good stuff here. And he's got a lot of photos in his books, too. So, if you don't like to read, you can look at the pictures, which is what I like to do. Um, if they want to get your books, I see them in the bookstores and stuff, but also, too, they can order them where? They can order them directly on my website, mm-hmm. ghostresearch.org. Uh, my latest book that came out is the uh, Haunted Guide, a uh, Field Guide to Haunted Highways and Bridges. Haunted Highways <clears throat> and Bridges. Yeah, last time when I had you on, you were working on that, so that's about three years. Yeah. And you think about it, you know, all the um, people that died in, on highways. And oh, infra- gosh, infrastructure yes. Uh-huh, and, yeah. uh, you know. And how many people have jumped from bridges, jumped too? Jumped from bridges. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Golden Gate Bridge for, for, is still the number one bridge in the United States where people still, to this day, commit suicide. Isn't that suicides. crazy? Isn't that something? Yeah. In beautiful San Francisco there, people like to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, isn't it? And if, yeah. if the jump doesn't kill them, the freezing water is It sure will. Current, yeah, current that will. water is cold. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And San Francisco is such a beautiful city, too, for people to do it. But for some reason, yeah. They yeah. Just, people like to jump off the Golden Gate. Yeah. The Empire State Building. Although now I think they have ways where you can't really jump from there anymore. Like in the past, you could, you know, you can't do that anymore. Also, too, the excursions into the unknown tours, which he runs, which are very good. Uh, do you still do those from the Chicago Ridge? It's, I think it's back to Chicago Ridge now. They, they Chicago got rid of the, Ridge, yeah, yeah they got rid of the Westfield name and that went back to Chicago Ridge. They're calling it again. Chicago Ridge. And I remember your little bus used to be there with the ghosts on the side of it. You pick the bus up there and he'd take you around all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a number of different tours that we do. Uh, uh, we do. Smaller groups, uh, we can do groups as small as four to six people in a van. Uh, we that do sounds about like us, isn't it, Mary? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we, we, got a, we were just talking about this. We, got a van, we get a van that holds 11 people. We get like four to six that show up for the tours, you know. But sure. we, we do them anyway. We go, you know. Yeah. And we have many buses that we can also get up, up to a 55-passenger motor coach. And uh, we have a number of different theme tours that we also do around this uh, throughout the year, like uh, uh, Haunted uh, Tragic Events Tour. We do a, a Gangster Murder Tour. We do a Haunted Churches Tour, a Graveyards Tour, a South and Northwest Side Tour, even a Weird Chicago Tour, which just kind of goes into weird places around Chicago. Which we got uh, a lot of those. A lot of those, yeah. absolutely. And these you can get if you're interested in any of this stuff. Also, too, like he told you before, earlier in the broadcast, you mentioned they'll even do a custom tour for you. So if you have a specific spot you want to go, like we talked, we touched today on Resurrection Mary, we touched on Bachelor's Grove, he'll do a, like a custom tour where he'll take you right to those places, and he, you can get him at 708-425-5163. And he will answer the phone. I can vouch for that because I called him last night. He does pick up the phone. Some of these people, you get the answering machine. Nope, if you dial that number, you talk to Mr. Kismeric himself. If you're doing a radio show, invite him on. He'll come on for you. <laughs> Unless you're calling at 2 o'clock in the morning. No, don't do that. Don't call at 2 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. Then you might get my answering machine yeah. <laughs> or my secretary. <laughs> the secretary slash first lady. There you go. The, per- the president of the Paranormal Ghost and Research Society of Illinois. Did I say it right? Good, good enough. Okay, good enough? Good Close enough. enough. Okay. Mr. Kazmierik, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a joy. And this was a fast hour. That went by quickly. For me, it did. Oh, we still got some time. Oh, we got five more minutes. We're going to keep talking. I'm not giving you up that easy. Yeah. Go ahead. What do you want to talk about? Well, um, we talk about some things we're going to be planning on doing next year. Go right ahead. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to do some investigating uh, investigations out of state next year. Some of the places where we're looking into are uh, possibly going into uh, Iron Island Museum, which is near Buffalo, New York, and um, um, another place called Rolling Hills Asylum, which is about 20 minutes away. Uh, asylums both. seem to be great things for haunts too. Absolutely. Asylums, old you know, old closed down asylums, schools, auditoriums, those type of places, and bathrooms. For whatever reasons, ghosts love bathrooms. My theory is because of the mirrors. I think they like the mirrors, so they hang out in bathrooms. The three yeah. best, the three locations we get the most most evidence are prisons, mm-hmm. asylums, and hospitals. Mm. Um, and you you figure that obviously what goes on in prisons, you know, people. You know, dying, they get executed, or they could be, you know, they could become victims of other prisoners. Sure. You know, hospitals, people die in ERs and emergency rooms, and you know, you know, botched, uh, you know, uh, op- operations or whatever. Uh, and then, um, um, you know, the state asylums, especially some of those old ones. Oh some yeah, of the, some of the care know, and stuff that went on. Some of the lobotomies yeah. and yeah, the, yeah. Uh, you know, lesser shock therapies. You know, some of the things that went on in the past. Yeah. Uh, mm. Just trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Going back to that again. I mean, the first time we were there. Uh, we heard and recorded nine disembodied screams that we actually heard physically with our own ears as Yikes. we were walking through. 
So it's just you know, without any equipment or anything, you could hear the screams. Just hear, just hear the screams. You know, walking down the hallways, and you hear the reactions from some of the people. What was that? And you can hear it clear as a bell. And you, you basically, you're going in there with about 60 people, but the 60 people divided by four floors in 256,000 square feet. You're not even going to hear the other. The other. Uh, I was going to say, now how do you explain this? You know, you say you, we could clearly hear the screams. They'll say, "Oh, well, that's just other people." Yeah. You know, it's somebody on. You know, you're on yeah. the third floor or you're, on the second floor. You're separated by them. so many, so many yeah. square feet and mm -hmm. solid concrete. You know, it's it's impossible to hear. Just such other. traumatic situations have made such an impression that those sounds are just preserved in that atmosphere, in those walls. You know, they're just there. Yeah. Absolutely. Even if that building wasn't there, chances are you'd walk on that ground, you'd still hear this stuff because that stuff just left its impression there. Yeah. Yeah, and people, like I said, can go to my website. Uh, there's a lot of things you can actually see on the website. Give us the give us the thing, the code for your website there, Sadie. So uh, www.ghostresearch, oh, ghostresearch.org, ghostresearch all one word okay. .org, and you, you not only can see all the evidence that we've collected on our investigations, uh, you can actually see what we've encountered, some of our paranormal experiences. You can actually see and look at the spirit photographs, both what we believe to be authentic photographs and ones that are. Uh, been explainable uh, images. You can also see the tools of our trade, you know, the different equipment we actually use in ghost hunting and mm -hmm. how it's used. And there's a lot of others. Uh, there's a whole section of other websites you can actually visit that are in there as well. So quite a number of things you can do in there um, on the website. We'll have to get you on another show. We'll have to do another show on ghost hunting equipment. You know, what's the good stuff and what's the fake? Because you can go up on eBay, you know, there's so much of this stuff for sale. Absolutely. It's, you know, how much of this is, you know, just like toy items and what is actually legitimate, you know, good equipment. So we'll have to do the pro and con about that. Not to, you know, slander anybody's merchandise, but um, just so you don't get taken, you know, in case you're thinking of purchasing some of this stuff. Because there's a lot of, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of fake stuff out there, you know, so, you know, like anything, yeah. Yeah, like when I first started out, the, the, some of the equipment, uh, well, it was non-existent. It was nothing, exactly, right. And then later on, we kind of adapted some mm -hmm. equipment for other purposes to ghost hunting, and now they're making equipment specifically for ghost hunting. Sure. Mm -hmm. Which is very refre re refreshing, because now you have very bright minds out there devising devices for ghost hunting, and no other purpose for that, just for ghost hunting. Yeah. 40 years of ghost hunting under your belt. 40 years of ghost hunting, and the second oldest running tours... Longest running tour. Long, the longest running tour now. Longest surviving one. Richard Crow did them first, but yeah. then you're you're now the uh, longest surviving uh, ghost uh, ghost um, tours. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. Great, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for coming on, sir. Appreciate it. Come back anytime you'd like. Fascinating talking to you. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, we are going to sign off. Are we not signing off? We've got ten minutes. Oh, we have ten minutes. I'm looking at the clock here. It shows eight o'clock. We got ten minutes. We're going to talk about ghost hunting equipment. <laughs> and then you want to do some of your announcements? Yeah. Okay, Mary, go ahead. Just give us a recap on your announcements, and oh. we'll get back to Mr. Kazmarek here. Oh, thank you. Oh. I thought we were, I'm looking at the clock here. It shows 8 o'clock. Oh, oh. That, one's, that shows 10 to 1. I'm looking at the one that says 8 o'clock. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I guess we're on, I don't know, what are we on, Wisconsin time or something? I don't know what we're on here. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, thank okay, you. give us some more stuff with the park oh. district there, and then we'll get back to Mr. Kazmierik here. We're not through with you yet. You don't get <laughs> off the hook that easy. <laughs> Join us at park district with a wonderful breakfast with Santa. Celebrate the holiday. This is a free event uh, with breakfast, of course. Um, now, you're supposed to sound excited about I this. Excited. <laughs> I can't be more excited than this. I mean, delicious breakfast. What can you do? I and mean, you got eggs, you got bacon, you got sausage, you have pancakes, you have All toast. this and Santa, too. And um, juice and coffee and cereal and milk this is all free to the uh, to Free. Our, Look at that. Where are you going to go and get this free? Yeah, where can you go? That's right. And this is at the beautiful Park District Recreation Center located at 5700 South Archer Road. This takes place on Saturday, December 12th from 8 to 12 noon. And you don't have to bring your camera if you don't wish. We're going to have a photographer on site and the uh, pictures will be produced uh, as well. Um, also, uh, on a good note, uh, for the seniors, we're having Christmas breakfast for them as well, and Santa will be visiting with um, our seniors, and this is also a free event, free breakfast, and also a free photo op with Santa. Um, another um, free offering, um, sorry, not free offering, but a new I offering. I imagine the seniors like this because they, being around Santa kind of makes them feel young. Yeah. Since Santa, <laughs> since Santa's so much older than they are, you know, so being around him makes him feel a little younger. So, 
<laughs> and uh, a new offering, uh, first time for the uh, Park District, is joining the fund for the candy cane hunt. Uh, children will search for a candy cane while the Park District is... I never heard of a candy cane hunt. Easter egg hunt, but never a candy cane hunt. Candy cane, something new they're offering. The whole entire Park District will be transported into a candy cane forest. How about that? Um, after participants collect the candy cane, they come into our recreation center for hot chocolate, cookies, and music, and arts and crafts, and um, games as well. Another um, offering, the first time, is to the uh, Summit residents. Any Summit residents that decorate their home for the Christmas holiday will come down to the Park District, register that their home is decorated for Christmas, and it will be judged, and they will receive a gift certificate and recognition at our next board meeting. Oh, like the best decorated house. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's nice. They should do it for Halloween, too. Oh, they, uh, they, we did it for Halloween. Oh, they did it for Halloween. Yeah. See? I come up with these ideas after somebody already thought of them. You know, that's <laughs> always my my uh, thing in life. I'm always like a day late and a dollar short, you know. Okay, and yeah. our address uh, is 5700 South Archer Road in Summit. And for further information, please give us a call at 708-496-1012. And then we got the game show event in March, but we'll be talking about that later. We got five months for that, so we'll be talking about that. And that we're going to broadcast too. Yes, That's going to be Windy City's going to broadcast from that, so we're going to do a live broadcast for that one. That's going to be game show night. That's another summit original. Another summit original. No one's done that one. Yeah, we're going to do You Bet Your Life and Let's Make a Deal and all that classic game show stuff. So yeah, okay. All right. Well, back to you, sir. How do you top that? <laughs> I can't. I can't top. Do you that. have any? Do you have any like uh, uh, asylum ghost hunting breakfasts? You know, where you you go on a ghost hunt and you serve breakfast too. And I don't know if anybody would want to eat when they do something like this. They're probably so keyed up. I don't. Know well, if I know eating. we went to uh, uh, last time we went to uh, Mansfield Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. They gave us uh, all you can eat pizza <laughs> and uh, okay. soda pop and, and hot coffee all night. So. Uh, <laughs> and God knows what they put in the coffee after yeah. they do that. Who knows what you've seen and what you heard, huh? Yeah. The caffeine kept you awake yeah, all yeah. night. I remember sometime back to over in Willow Springs. I don't know if they still do it. Rickle Beans, I think, was the name of the place. Yeah. And they had like an all night thing they did there too, where you could go in and you had pizza to eat and you could sleep there and stuff and they did investigations. I don't know if they're still doing those or not. You know, that was a while ago. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know if they still do it. Is that even still there? I don't you know. I don't know. It's probably long gone, yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So many places, unfortunately, in Chicago um, that have been written in my books are gone. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they're yeah. simply gone. Um, it, it, there's, there's something else. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's something else, but what, was, over. what you wrote about in that book is still going on there. Absolutely. Even though that, that building might be torn down or whatever, but that's still going on. You know how that goes. It stays in that atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's always, you know, the interesting thing about that is, you know, when people say there's a building that's haunted, you know, whether it be, you know, a bowling alley or maybe a church or a restaurant or, you know, you know, a pub or whatever, and that place gets torn down and something gets built on top of that, doesn't necessarily <laughs> doesn't mean the ghost the doesn't stop mm -hmm. the haunting. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, it can mm -hmm. be what they call stigmatized property. I mean, the property can be haunted by something that happened in the past, uh, whether there was a murder, a suicide, uh, an Indian massacre, you know, way before, you know, Chicago even became Chicago. Um, and that trauma of that event has been just kind of just frozen in that frozen atmosphere. In that and like we talked about earlier, when the conditions are just right in the atmosphere or exactly. the right person is there, whatever, this thing manifests itself again. You see this or you hear this, whatever, yeah. yeah. Fascinating how this stuff works, yeah. yeah there's so many, like, so many different examples. And I often wonder, you know, like give you a good example, there's a place on in... Um, uh, I think it's Brookfield that used to be the old Alonzi's Villa mm -hmm. uh, bowling alley. It's now part of uh, an RTA bus stop or something, or now or something, or the train stop. And I often wonder if you know, that was haunted as heck uh -huh. when it was a uh, when it was a um, um, a bowling alley. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if people that are there now are experiencing anything. Yeah, are experiencing anything? You know, waiting for the train. Mm -hmm. You know, at that at that stop. You know, and other places that are just you know have turned into you know, from one thing to another, and completely different in some cases, like that. just one example, uh, are just experiencing things. Another good example would be, you know, John Wayne Gacy's home, which oh, is not, yeah. uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're talking, we're, we're in Norwich right here, yeah. which is not that far mm -hmm. away from where. It's where, gone, it's, it's not gone. there anymore. But the yeah. original house yeah. is gone. A new house is built right on that same property. Who would want that? 
Can you imagine who wanting to have a house? You wonder you know, if the people yeah. living there are experiencing anything. Experiencing yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. Or if they're, t- if they're talking about it. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I to understand... Sometimes they, if you want to sell that house, you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I understand they got... Unless you live in Europe. In Europe, they love that. You know, when you, you sell a house in Europe, you put in the real estate thing that it's wanted. You know, they love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you're, it's funny that you're talking about, because just last week, Oscar and I w- rode past that house over on Summerdale. Past the, uh, where the Gacy yes, house that's was? Right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes, because he was asking me about it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we were out on, uh, on an errand, and he asked me where to start talking about it, and I t- took him right in front of the... Right in front of the house where uh, it makes me wonder why they would ever yeah. want to build another house yeah. over that. You know, and I also showed not, him, but I, they did. I also showed him where his mother used to live, right on the corner of uh, Alcott and Argyle, right across the street from where I used to live when I was married in Harwood Heights. Hmm. So, Casey's mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was nice. She didn't murder anybody. No. No. I don't think so. I'm still alive yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you knew her. Well, I've I've seen her. I mean, I've seen her. You know, because we lived a half a block. Oh, okay. Her, right. yeah. Yeah. And obviously, uh, how about him? Did you ever have any contact with him? Like, see him no, in passing, no, wave hello no, to him or anything no. like that? Well, I mean, I don't pay no attention to yeah. people coming in and out of right. other people's homes. Yeah. You know, and right across the street from Gacy's house, when I was a telephone man, worked for Ellen Night Bell. I installed telephones right across the street from where Gacy used to live. Huh. And right down the street is a firehouse, the Engine Company Eleven. Well, John, you're just like all over the place there. Oh, yes. Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, you're at Rose Hill Cemetery at 4.30 in the morning by yourself. Oh, oh, 4 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock in the morning. morning. He goes to yep. Rose Hill Cemetery on September 27th. Mm-hmm. Every year he does this. He sets up the broadcast here because they do it at the Fireman's Memorial. Can you imagine being in Rose Hill at that hour by yourself? It's nice and quiet. Yeah, it's, it's quiet there during the day, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are dying to get in. You know what they say about the cemeteries, that old joke, you know? Yeah. They must give you a key. You must have a key to get in there or something, your own private. No, I go in the back gate, uh, in the maintenance uh, gate. They, uh, they know. You're supposed to let people know that. Yeah, they. Uh, we'll have people sneaking in there at night going through the maintenance <laughs> gate. <laughs> I, I tell heard that on Paranormal Radio. They said we could get in here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, have, I, have a, I have a way to get in there. But I've been doing that for about 15 years. I've been yeah. going there and uh, setting up the equipment. And never experienced anything that scared you? No. No, nothing? No, nothing. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. I'd go to during the day and I'd get scared. <laughs> <laughs> go in the mausoleum. I love that mausoleum. It is very creepy. Supposedly, uh, the Sears the, ghost. The ghost of Richard Warren Sears yeah. is, is seen in t- complete uh, uh, hat and tails yeah, and uh-huh. everything walking yeah. through that mausoleum because he's buried not too far away Montgomery from his Ward. Ma- Aaron Montgomery Ward, his arch yeah. nemesis. Yeah, that's what they tell me. They, I, I've heard that. They say his figure, top headed, like you said, a top headed man wearing a top hat and a frock coat. They see his figure walk from the Sears script over to Montgomery Wards. So isn't that funny that two men were rivals in life, but yet one visits the other's tomb? Kind of strange, yeah. That's a very, very old. I don't know if that is. The, you might know this because you would know the facts maybe on this more than I would. Is that the oldest mausoleum in Chicago? Don't know. But I know it's. it's I know it is it's very one old. One of the oldest yeah. cemeteries in Chicago. Oh yeah. 1859 mm-hmm. uh, Calvary, also 1859. Um, they they both. You know, about the same year, mm-hmm. even even uh, Graceland about that same time. Yeah, Graceland and Roseville are right around the same. Yeah, but they were kind of built. The difference between Graceland and Roseville, they were built for the rich, for the elite. Absolutely. Yeah, they were built for the elite of the city. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like just for the common men. That's why you have all these real famous people in Roseville. It's it's fascinating. So I, lo- you, I love Roseville. So if you don't here. go there just to look for the ghost, go to just look for a interesting oh, monuments. Oh yeah, the, the interesting monuments and the, fascina- and the names, you know, all the household names like Sears and Montgomery Ward and Swift's Premium and Oscar Mayer and all these. I think Oscar Mayer has a little sausage on his tombstone. Marshall Field. <laughs> yeah, Marshall Field, they're all in there, yeah, and some of that architecture is just absolutely stunning. It really is. It's, you know, like they say, they don't make them like they used to. Some of that cemetery architecture is just absolutely just beautiful and stunning. Mm-hmm. And in the mausoleum itself, all the all the windows in the mausoleum are all Tiffany glass, Tiffany leaded glass, because they wanted it all uniform. They didn't want anybody putting like one type of glass and theirs and another type. So it's all Tiffany. So you can imagine how much that's worth. And that mausoleum is is as big as the uh, Science and Industry Museum of Science and Industry. So that's how huge it is. Yeah, just fascinating. If you ever want to spend a real nice day at, at a cemetery, if you know you say this, it sounds horrible, but Rosehill would be the place to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the largest of all the Chicago cemeteries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just just fascinating stuff there. Yeah. And then you got some paranormal tales there, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, did we run out of time? Now we ran overtime, probably. See, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> we get going. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for your input, John. It's nice to hear you talk on here. John will do that. Once in a while, if he's got something to say, he'll, he'll, he'll put his voice in there for you. Yeah. 
Mary, thank you for coming on. It's yep. always a pleasure thank seeing you, you and having you, uh, you having you on the air here. And Mr. Kazmierik, gosh almighty, anytime come back, sir. The invitation's open to you. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, we will be signing off uh, and doing our next show in December. I'm not sure the date on that one. Got a few people in, in mind to put on that one. The only thing I know for certain is I'll be doing the story of the Christmas tree ship because I like to do that one every year for December. Uh, thank you so much for listening to these shows. They're an absolute joy and a pleasure for me to do. I love doing them. And, John, thanks for letting me do the shows. Thank you so much. Um, listen to us at www.windycityhometown.com. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, did we say? 10.30. 10.30, Jack FM 89.7 in Norwich. It'll be like the local station here. You can get us on that. And then also, too, Mr. John Shikanda, who produces our shows, throws the shows up on YouTube in a couple of days, so you'll have them on there, too. Thank you so much for listening, and bye-bye for now. Thanks. You have been listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek from the John Nevada Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. Paranormal Radio was directed by John Nevada and the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network is Mr. John Sikanda. And the station manager for WRHS-FM Norwich is Mr. Kevin Zeflick. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Monday, November the 9th, the year 2015. Until next time, please be safe and thanks for listening. And this is Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM, Norwich, Illinois. Have a great day, everyone.